Okay, let's continue to work on these buttons. I'm going to put a little text over the top here so that we can uh, have a little more of a, a button-like experience. So what I'm going to do is, on this main button layer, notice this is the main button layer, right? I'm going to make a new layer on top. And I'm going to, on this new layer on top, I'll say, I'll call it button text, right? Button text. So this layer is for the main buttons, this layer is for the button text. I'm going to put a keyframe right here where the buttons appear on the stage. Right click, insert keyframe. And then I'm going to type in some text for the buttons. Now this text is going to be static text, okay, not dynamic text. It's just going to be static text and I'll click and type in home right and that doesn't look so bad but I'm gonna need it to be black and I'm gonna put the alpha up to a hundred percent okay and I'll take the size down to 24 and that's a little bit small so maybe I could take the size up a little bit. No, actually 24 is good. All right, I'll take that 24. And then I can just copy and then edit, paste in place, and slide over. And then Control Shift V, paste in place, and then slide it over. And Control Shift V, paste in place, and slide it over and then I could change the names here so I could say call this about I could change this to lowercase see how that looks call this gallery for images and call this video let's say so there's my four tabs I haven't centered them or anything but you can see that they're there they're on screen so if I hit control enter now I've got the buttons here and let's look at it it looks better when we look at it in the browser window so we'll refresh here right and there we go so now all we got to do is activate these buttons and fix them up a little bit more. Let's do that two-tone color effect that I had in the other site. And what we can do with that is I'm going to zoom in on one of the buttons and I will double click on it, right? And now I'm inside of this movie clip button, right? So here it is, see two two sides to it. And let's say we wanted to do uh, one of those curved two-tone colors. What you could do is you could get a line tool, right? So I'll get the line tool, and I'll just draw a line like this, right? So there's my line. And now I'll get the selection tool, and I'll just approach the line. And as I get close to the line, you'll see it turns into a curved uh, cursor, and that means I can actually bend it. So I can bend it, and I can also grab the endpoint and move the endpoint, right? And then if I want to, I could position that above, right? And now my line bisects the graphic, right? The line bisects this graphic, right? And there's one problem here is that my line I pasted on the top layer, on the actions layer, instead of layer 1 and that's no good so what I'm gonna do is I'll select that line and cut it control X on the keyboard edit cut and then I'm gonna paste it on layer one where the where the graphic is so edit paste in place means paste in the same place and so now this line bisects and basically cuts this graphic in half and now what I can do is I can take this graphic right get my eyedropper tool select it, 
open it up, slide over here, and I can darken it a little bit, creating a two-toned effect, right? So I just put in a darker color here. Now all I have to do is select the line, double click on the line to select the whole thing, and press delete. And now if I go back to scene one, you'll see I have the two-toned effect now on all of the buttons since they're a movie clip, right? So that was pretty easy. Okay, now that we have that, it's time to get these buttons working. So what I'm going to do is, to get these buttons working, I'm going to pull this down a little bit so we can see all of our layers here. What we're going to do to get these buttons working is we're going to have to create places so that when we click on the button we can go somewhere on the timeline. So for instance, what I'm going to do is I'll slide this over and right here I'll put a keyframe F6 and I'll put a frame label that says about and hit enter. So there's about and then over here I'll hit F6 and put a frame label that says gallery hit enter and then over here I'll skip notice each time I'm just skipping 10 frames um, you know 10 frames and creating a keyframe but it doesn't really matter how far I skip unless I'm planning on doing some animation in between the keyframes so that's just one point so I'll hit F6 again or right click insert keyframe and this one will be for video let's say hit enter right so now I've got these different and then over here maybe I'll put regular frames so we can see the the label alright so okay and now on this keyframe what we've got is we've got this key we're gonna need to stop the action over here too so right above here I'll right click insert keyframe open up my actions window F9 on the keyboard and hit stop, open and close parentheses, and a semicolon. So that's a stop action. I'm going to copy that frame and paste it in these other places. So now on these keyframes, I've got stop actions, which will guarantee that when the playhead gets here, it'll stop. I'm going to need regular frames going through. So once again, insert frame or click here and hit F5 on your keyboard right and F5 and F5 and F5 and F5 so now we've got some more um, more stuff going on here we've got a place to jump the playhead to basically and now it's ready now we're ready to put in some action script to control how the buttons work